Hello guys, so welcome, welcome to EZTV International, EZTV Presents TechB, another episode. Uh, today actually we will learn um, uh, how you can set up your first Active Directory Domain Controller. So that's all you're going to learn and I'm going to share my screen. Uh, I'll, go, I'll show you step by step everything. All right. So now, uh, to actually, uh, today we're gonna build the Active Directory first domain controller, right? So what I have to do, I have to log in my ASXi server. I have total three ASXi server, and I didn't build actually, uh, I didn't build yet a vCenter server. So if I have a vCenter server, then I don't need to log in each and every server to see actually what kind of VM or virtual machine I have on which uh, ESXi host. I don't need to do that. I just, through one console, I can access everything. But right now I don't have vCenter, so I have to log in each and every SXI host to know actually where is my, I already built a virtual machine for Active Directory, but I'm not sure where it is. It's in host number one or host number two or host number three. So that's why I'm logging each and every one. And uh, then, oh, sorry, 192.168.1. Well, sorry, why is not? Okay. Well, 192.168.1.12, which is my second ESX host. And 192.168.1.13 is my third one. So I'm, I'm, I'm logging each and every one individually. So think about, you don't have vCenter, but you have 50 SXI. What do you have to do? You have to log in each and every individual machine like this. So you have to open 50 tab, which is uh, not visible actually. Say you have 50 um, SXI host and on top of the 50 SXA host, you have 250 virtual machine or maybe 500 virtual machine. So how you gonna know which virtual machine is belongs to which SXA host? There is no way, right? You have to log in 50 and then you have to look at, right? Or otherwise you have to have a note somewhere, okay, this machine is belongs to this SXA host. Based on the documents, you can maybe figure out. Otherwise you have to log in each and every one. So that's why vCenter is very, very, very important because vCenter is a central management. All right. So, so far we log in all three ESXi and on the, from the first ESXi, I, I'm able to see here, I have a machine is called ELS, DB jump 01 and DC 01, okay. So the reason we created this jump is jump is nothing. It's just the machine I want to use in, inside of my VMware environment. So if I use my laptop, what, what will be happen? So if I was to implement something, for example, um, this in the server deployment. So you have to have an ISO file on your laptop, then you have to run the ISO file from your laptop. So that means your laptop is connected with um, Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi connection can be broken every time, any time, right? So if it is broken in the middle of your installation, that means you have to start it from beginning again. So that's why I always recommend to do whatever you want to do the operations, do it on your jump machine, create a virtual machine and send your VMware environment and uh, just treat that virtual machine as your jump machine. You can name it as a jump or you can treat it as a jump, whatever. So that's why I create a virtual machine as a jump machine and I have a DC01. So today's subject is to um, deploy first domain controller, activity domain controller, that means we're going to implement Active Directory environment today. So this is my machine. And I believe I have everything configured inside of this. I, do, I, I don't want to access this machine uh, like this. I have already physical uh, uh, IP address. I have already enabled enable, um, our remote, uh, remote desktop so I can use it. I can use this one, um, remote desktop connections. These tools, I can use it to access it because uh, if I open it through the browser, like 
it's not compatible. Like you cannot do everything, copy, paste, and a lot of other things. So for the flex flexibility, I use this one. So this one through the remote desktop, if this machine has a remote desktop enabled, you can open uh, through remote desktop connection. So you can use the IP address of this virtual machine or the name of this virtual machine. So you can go either one. So if I try with the name, let's see. Okay, by the name, I'm getting hard time because this might mean that the runner does not have belongs to a specific network, okay. It's fine. Uh, let's try with dot one dot two. Now it says okay. And uh, see here it says ELS administrator, but we don't have ELS yet. So what I have to do? Go more choice, use different, and then administrator, right? But in here shows domain it shows ELS, but I don't have ELS domain. In that case, I have to use the machine name as a domain, the machine name as a domain. So, and then slash administrator and password. All right, so say yes. Now I logged in as a local admin on this machine. So what's my target? My main target is to implement Active Directory here. So for the Active Directory here, you have to install Active Directory roles first. So what is the Active Directory roles here? Um, so first, before you initiate something by doing something, what you should do, you should do, um, first make sure you have all these settings is like the prerequisite configurations is correct. So time zone is, you, I, 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 I'm in Eastern time. So that's why I change it to, it's turn time. Um, and also uh, IP address of this machine, which is one to two, is based on our um, plan. So I'm gonna, I can show you actually uh, my IP, IP, IP address spreadsheet. Wait, on okay, IP spreadsheet, IP, 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 okay. So where's my IP address spreadsheet is in one of my share. This is the IP address spreadsheet. So I'm following this IP spreadsheet. Okay, got it. All right. So based on our plan, um, we are. This is the plan. This is one zero zero two. So this is the IP address we are using, and based on that, I already assigned the IP address here, and. The uh, firewall like temporary I turn off because I will turn on it through the GPU policy later on. And computer name, I have a computer name, I change it. So everything is okay. Now I would just need to install the Active Directory roles. So how are you gonna install the Active Directory roles? Uh, dashboard, add a roles and feature. Click next, click next, role based, click next and Active Directory. Domain service. There's a lot of other activity service, which is activity certificate service, activity domain service, activity federation service, activity lightweight directory service, which is LDAP, a uh, write management service. So I'm going to do just only one, which is active directory. This one, active directory domain service, just domain service, nothing else. I'm not going to do any DSCP, any DNS on this machine. So this, this machine, this server will be only Active Directory. I'm going to my plans to implement the Active Directory environment, but this virtual machine will be my first domain controller. But for understanding, so Active Directory so with one machine you can make your Active Directory environment. With two machine you can make your Active Directory. Environment. With four machine, with five machine, with ten machine, with twenty machine you can make your Active Directory environment. So. Active Directory and Domain Controller is two different things. So Active Directory means you have an Active Directory Domain Controller. Someone, some of the machine will be control your Active Directory, right? So if you build Active Directory on one machine, that means you have Active Directory environment and you have a controller, that means the one you just implement, right? So your first virtual machine where you implement the Active Directory, 
that machine will be your first domain controller. So in, in future, if you need, based on your uh, company uh, size, uh, if you need more, like for like bandwidth sharing, traffic sharing, if you need more uh, uh, domain controller to distribute the workload, you can have it. So that's why you should you can deploy maybe second one will be your same domain, same active directory, same domain, but you can have different domain controller which can control your domain, right? That's why it's called domain controller. Okay, so I'm not going to install anything here, no other service. Click next. And whatever the by default, just I'm going with by default and next and install. But before I install it, it's always remember have a check mark on the registered destination if yes so that means if after after this installation if you need to restart it will be restored automatically you don't need to hit restart okay install it so i'm installing right now and it will take a little bit time i don't want to waste this time so i'm going to pause the video now i'm going to pa pause this video now and then i'll come back on this time all right, so Active Duty Machine roles installation is going on, it's running. Uh, in the meantime, I'm trying to actually uh, prepare my other server, my, my, my other DNS server. So for the DNS server, I have a plan, uh, provide the IP address four and different name with DNS01. Um, so I'm going to prepare that machine to have my uh, DNS as a DNS server. So, uh, let me see maybe the in here dna01 okay on second machine i have it this one dna01 so let me see actually this machine has everything installed oh, this machine not installed yet anything so what i have to do uh this is just brand new installation i just just install the OS. that's it nothing else Okay, again. So, um, this is the second machine. After you install a brand new virtual machine, you just need to log in with a local admin, provide the local admin password, which is the administrator, and you have to provide the password. But after that, what do you have to do? You have to log in the virtual machine. But um, before and before you log in, you have to go to the, this This is the virtual machine window, right? Or to the browser. So you have to go to the action, and then you're gonna get a list. From the list, you have to go to guest OS, and then you're gonna get another list. And see here, send key and control uh, alter delete. But before I click on control alter delete, I want to install the BMR tools because right after I log in, I'm gonna install the these tools. So you should do it first. Install BMR tools. Now, when I click in install BMR tools, now it's gonna attach BMR tools inside my virtual machine as a CD. Now again, go back to action, guest OS, and then see it's already mounted, right? Then say send key, Oof, send, very smoothly you have to go. Control alter delete, then you'll be able to log in. So whatever the password you provide, just log in with this. Please enter. Okay, so actually I'm saving the time. This one is my DNS server, right? I'm preparing this server to install the DNS uh, roles and uh, configuration. And I'm going to go back here for my first one, this one. Okay, I, this one is still running. So this one is still running, I, I have time. So I I can utilize this waiting time to build my, okay, what happened? 
Okay, so I just logged into my ELS VPN DNS. So today we're gonna build two, two servers. Active Directory first domain controller plus DNS server. So DNS server is separate. If you want, you can build Active Directory and DNS both together in one machine. But in reality, in the real field, and the enterprise level, they always make it separate. So that's why I want to show you as a separate. All right. So this is our DNS. Uh, I just provide the virtual machine name as a DNS 01, but actually it's not set up yet. It's, I just just install the OS. So what the uh, configuration you have to do it before. Okay, before I do this configuration, I'm going to minimize the server manager and I'm going to go for installing. So you have to do the same thing, same stuff. When you have, you, you build a machine. So see here, uh, as a DBD, um, I have a BMR tools here. Double click on it or right click on it. And then right click setup, uh, setup 64. It's gonna be a little bit slow response because BMR tools is not installed. That's why it's gonna be a little bit slow response and then say run as administrator. Okay, behind you have to wait because it's gonna take time. Uh, there's no other choice, okay. Um, so I don't need this window anymore. I'm just closing this one because it's loading. Uh, instruction process is loading. All right. So what I'm going to do, just next, 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 install, that's it. So after this instruction is done, it's gonna uh, look for, it's gonna ask me to reboot the server, but I'm not gonna reboot it now because I have, couple other steps to complete and then I'll reboot it finally. All right, so in here, what do you need to do? On the server manager side, what do you have to do? You have to, for, I said, you have to provide an IP address. This is the, your second task. Okay, double click on it, go to the properties. Uh, disable DSCP, uh, this one, uh, IPv6. We are not using IPv6, we are going to. Use protocol version for TCP IP, protocol version four. So double click on it, double click on it, then you're gonna see, get this window and then go here. Okay, select this one and then provide the IP address. So we know 192.168.1.4 is reserved for the first DNS server. And when you click here, subnet you're gonna get automatically because it's a C, um, it's a C class, that's why you are getting the 254.255.255.0 and then the default getter we know already, 192.168.1.1 and prefer DNS server. Now the question is here, prefer DNS server. So this one is this one will be actually DNS server. So the machine IP will be the DNS server because that one will be a DNS server later on, right? So 192.168.1.4. So it's the same IP with, the, with this machine because this machine we are make, trying to make it as a DNS server, but this is not a DNS server yet, but it will be a DNS server. So preferred DNS will be the same one as a server IP address. And alternate, I we don't know yet. We're gonna build it later on, so we can say one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot one, and also the activity domain controller. We can use it temporary as a DNS server. So I'm going to add it. Uh, 192.168.1.2, which one will be our active directory domain controller, right? Okay. All right. So I provided the IP address here. Within short time, it's going to be changed here. And now I'm going to turn off this one, uh, which is firewall. So public, private, and short. All those things you have to turn off. Turn off, go back, and then this private. Okay, and then private, turn off, and go back, and then public, right? Public, click here, turn off, and go back. So you're done. All three, you did already, right? See, cross, cross, cross. Okay, so this one will be off, and remote desktop. I'm going to it disable, so I'm going to allow, okay. But don't forget to take it out this one because later on we're gonna 
have check mark here with that uh, group policy. And also if you have a check mark here, um, you have to enable another GPU policy. Otherwise, if you are a domain admin, but still now you cannot log in this machine. You have to have a local admin privilege access if you have this one check mark. So I'm going to take out this one now, apply and okay. Okay, and then uh, see here, it's a specific time by default. So I have to change the specific to EST because I live in EST zone. Uh, so which is the EST zone here? This one, minus five. It is minus five, it's done in Canada. And automatic adjust clock for daylight savings. And okay. So, so far I did everything here and just only one thing left, which is this actual server name. So on the machine, you already saw there is a name, but that one is the VMware inventory name, server inventory name, it's not actual real name. So actual real name, you have to put it here uh, inside the machine. So inside the machine, the machine name is different. So what do you do? Under the server manager, go to the local server and then computer name, click here. You'll get a new window from the window, go to change and then provide the name here. Okay, I'm going to make it small because I need to read exactly the same name. ELSBPWBS. I have already this name, but I cannot paste it here. I have to type it uh, because I'm using this window through browser. So that's browser doesn't have that option to copy and paste. Uh, so I have to type it. ELSBPWBPWVA DNS. BNS01. Okay. So this is my machine name. Okay. When you change the machine name, it's also required to reboot. So I'm going to do this, the, all the uh, reboot together. Okay. Now I can reboot it. So I'm I'm done with installing everything. And also I enable our, our remote desktop. So now I'll be able to access this machine remotely like this. I'll be able to open it remotely like this. This one, like this one like this machine okay so i already did the prerequisite configuration for my uh, dns server okay so again uh this is the part two video as a sequence of my home lab build up so if i can show you um so this is this is our plan right we um on our first videos um build like physical machine we configured and then we install um uh, we configured this uh esxi server and uh, idrag esxi RAID configuration and then we created a virtual machine on top now today on top of the virtual machine we are doing whatever we should do right so based on this part today is the second part which is building active directory first domain controller and a dns server right so we are doing this effort today. Um, so uh, in this server, we already installed uh, Active Directory roles and it's not required to reboot, but you see here on um, the uh, notification flag here, if you click here, it's gonna show you configuration. All right, so um, configuration record install success on this one. So the feature we already installed. Now, what we need to do? We need to um, uh, configure it. We say promote this server to a domain control. We have to promote it. So now the machine is ready to promote for a active domain controller. So click here and it will give you another window. So now for a clear understanding, I'm just minimize the server one, then you can see it clearly. Okay. All right. So in here, what it shows, add a domain controller to an existing domain, add a new domain to an existing forest, add a new forest. So whenever you are trying to build a new active directory domain, in that case, you don't have any forest. Forest is the main one, the root one, the top one. Under the forest, you can have multiple domain, but forest should be one. So under one forest, so if you 
if your company doesn't have any active directory environment, that means the first one you are doing, which is you are creating a forest. So when you create a forest, in the meantime, you cannot develop your domain also. So that means forest and domain you can build together. So this is the first one, right? So you have to choose add a forest. And then do domain name. You have to choose a domain name. ELS, say ELS. Um, ELS what? ELS.com, dot something, dot com, dot net, dot local, dot whatever. Anything. Any name with dot something. Any name based on your choice and then dot and then anything. Some say dot gov, dot org, dot net, dot live, dot local, anything. So I choose ELS.com. Click next. And now it's verifying actually I have this ELS name available or not okay so now by default is specify domain controller capabilities is selecting okay this domain controller will be capable to provide support as a domain name system dns server but i'm not i don't want to actually use this one as a domain name server but just give me a second because it's now it's checking actually uh, still is checking, still is checking. We have to wait. And forest functional level is Windows 2016. Domain functional level is to, so Windows Server 2016. What does it mean? It means if you say uh, in your environment, you have Windows, uh, you have a domain controller. Maybe you have a say 10 domain controller out of 10, uh, maybe two of them, maybe four of them still in 2008 or two, or maybe 2012. And this one we are building here is 2019, uh, 2019, right? So you can change 2019 because we know we are our, 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 uh, okay. Let me check actually which version we are using. Windows 2019, sorry. Uh, version, checking the version, um, the year. Winbar. So Winbar, it's a 2019, right? So your first le functional level can be 2019, but student is not available, later on we can do it. So the highest one is 2016. That means in your environment, if you want to create any machine with 2016 and as a and you can run as a domain controller you can run it because your environment support 2016 but if you do it like this 2008 r2 that means your environment will support 2008 r2 also and if you do this one that means you your your, your environment will support the uh, uh, windows server 2012 r2 as a domain controller later on if you need if you want to implement you can do it or you can add it if you have a, a like older one you can add it with this um so that's what it's mean but i'm going to leave it as it is as before so dns actually i'm not going to build the dns server with the active directory domain controller right so i just unchecked it by default it has a check mark global catalog is important you have to have it global catalog and password now password is uh it's the same password because when you, if you want to decommission this server, that time you need that password. So I'm going to put this password, the same password I use um, along the whole configuration. And also uh, enterprise level, they always do the same thing. They use a master password for their administrative stuff. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm using the same password. So that's how I, I'll know, I'm, I'm not gonna forget it. Okay, so now it's a net BIOS name. It's looking for net BIOS actually. The name I choose is available in my environment or not. Okay, it's found, it's available, net BIOS domain name. It's not found and it's gonna show me error message, but now it's not getting, uh, showing any error, error message. So ELS is my net BIOS name. I said ELS.com, right? So ELS, it will be my net BIOS name. If anybody asks you, what is your net BIOS? That means before the dot, whatever the name you have, that's called a net BIOS. Click next.
All right. Now the path. Uh, all NTDS is a database. NTDS is a database and is a sysbol folder. So all the um, uh, Active Directory attributes will go your sysbol folder and also the information, the data will go to the your database, which is NTDS. So database folder location, log file location, and sysbol location, everything is going under uh, C drive and under Windows folder. If you want, you can move it. So if you have another drive, but we don't have another drive, we have only one drive. But in your case, maybe you can have multi, like more, more drive. If you go to the C, I have only C drive, you can have another drive. So you can move uh, maybe thing to another drive if you want, but you don't need to actually. So this is the information here and click next. And then it shows you everything, whatever you configure so far, and you can click next. And now this uh, prerequisite needs to be validated before Active Directory domain service is installed, installed on this computer. So before you install the domain controller, um, the Active Directory domain services is checking the prerequisite. Actually, the, this server, this machine, this virtual machine is eligible to have Active Directory domain service. That's what it's doing right now. So we have to wait here. And Active Directory configuration is pretty simple. Active Directory machine domain control is pretty simple. But the one I have a plan to show you guys today, like separate domain controller, uh, sorry, separate DNS server. That's a little bit hard, little bit complicated. Okay, it says everything is okay. But one thing, we just run into domain, okay. All the time it shows this uh, warning, but it's fine. All Basically, check press um, passed successfully. Click install to begin the installation. So install. Now it's going to install it. So we have to wait. In the meantime, we can go for this other one. So if you guys can remember, so this machine is already ready, right? Uh, refresh. So this one has an IP address and network. It's it has IP address and name. Um, uh oh. Post name ELS. Why is not showing here? Oh, so when I create, I'm not sure what does it mean. Ah, I did a mistake. So I have to be careful. I'm going to log in here again. Or maybe I can, because I have a uh, remote access enabled. So I can do through the remote access. So how I can do that? Right click on it, I'll just open another one and type here 192.168.1.4, right? Okay. But I cannot log in with like this. What I have to do, I have to use this name. See, which one? This one, actually I typed wrong. Instead of E, I typed W. That I have to, I have to, I have to change it. So, uh, let's see, cho more choice is slash A D M M I N I S T R A D O R and You see, so I did one mistake, uh, that's why I have to reboot it again. And come on, so the actual server name I uh, like is a um, typing mistake instead of E, I type W. So I'm going to fix it right now. So to fix it, what you have to do, you have to go to the same option again and change the computer name. That's that's all. So this is our DNS server, right? IP number four. Uh, but DNS server means it's not DNS server yet. It's gonna be a DNS server. So what I have to go, I have to go to the, I have to open um, server manager because everything I can get it from the server manager. So our Active Directory is going uh, is installing. It's on in, in oh, oh. Where is where is our Active Directory machine? Oh, it's already rebooted because it's already installed. 
I have to up out there. Anyway, I'll show you guys there uh, later on. All right, so see here W. It should be E. I'm going to change the click here. Then we'll get the window, change, and then just change it to E. So make sure it's ELS, okay? Okay. Okay, close. Now it says restart again because whenever you change the computer name, you have to restart it. So restart it. All right, let's restart. Now I need to check uh, the first machine, which is our domain controller. So domain controller is, uh, why is not showing here? Two, right? Okay. So now the domain controller is already, we already installed Active Directory, right? So now we'll, we don't need to log in as a local. If you want, you can log in as a local. Also, also you can log in as a, you can say ELS. Now, after you install the Active Directory app and then you configure the Active Directory, right? So when you configure the Active Directory, now this machine is the Active Directory machine. Now it's a domain controller. So. Whenever you are logging as a domain controller, you have to you can log in with the domain name ELS, then slash A D M I N I S P R A P O R. This is the by default created administrator. It's a, this one is called domain admin. Before previously we use ELS with the computer name slash administrator. That means this is the local administrator. Name name is administrator. That means this is the username, right? So this administrator is the local admin. Now the one I am typing here ELS slash forward slash uh, administrator, that's a domain administrator. So this administrator and this one look like same, but actually not same. Power-wise, this one is more powerful. Okay. Okay. Now hit enter. So now I'm logging with my domain user, domain admin. That's why it says, please wait for the group policy client. So it's group policy client. But actually, um, uh, so it's still is loading. It's going to take a little bit of time, maybe. Uh, in the meantime, we can see actually um, our other machine, which is our DNS machine, right? So we change it. I corrected the name. So this name is um, VMware, SXI or VMware inventory name, and this is the actual server name. So this name was wrong before. Instead of E, the, the first letter was W. So I fix it, now it's ready. And also we can log in there. How we can log in there? So the type the IP address, okay, that's cool. Because, okay. But we, we are not logging with this name because we already changed the name, right? So change the name and what should be the name? This is the name, right? Copy. So the machine name slash L-E-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-A-T-Y-M-S-T-R. -E uh, so this is a local admin. The reason I use this one because right, this machine is not a part of Active Directory yet. So that in that case, I have to log in with like this when I use RDP option. All right, so this uh, this is the DNS server machine. It's, it will be it's not a DNS server yet. It will be, uh, that's how we are going to prepare this machine. And uh, this is the Active Directory machine. Why is it still running? I'm not sure. So maybe I have to wait. Let's wait a little bit, see what's gonna be happen. Otherwise you're gonna be re-logging re again. Miss creating the profile. That's why maybe taking time because first time I'm logging as a, a domain administrator on the active domain controller number one. That's why it's taking time maybe. Um, right. So this is my, okay, this is this one is my DNS server, right? So DNS server, what do you need? It's not getting the, okay. Now, Okay, it has everything. All 
Okay, so server measure, I can say don't show this again and close it. Later on, it's not gonna show. So I have like I have a plan to make this machine as a DNS server. So I have to install the DNS role, right? So how we can I can install the DNS role? Of course, if you open the server manager and by default, it's gonna be selected dashboard, and from the dashboard, you're gonna get this option, which is called add roles and features. So you can click add roles and features, click next, click next, click next. When you are selected on the roles, server roles and from there, you can see there's the options called DNS server. Install the DNS server roles, add DNS server, next. Next. And all the time, don't forget to do this one, yes. And then install. So in here, you have to wait because you're just installing the DNS server role here. And I'm not sure how long so I'm going to close it. And I'm going to log in again. Or to oh. So I'm not logging as a domain. I'm logging as a Local administrator, let's see how it works. It shouldn't be. Wow. So ELS BBW DC01, connect. Oh no. Okay. So let's log in. See, long time I open it, it's happened with the ESXi. Um, when you open, when you uh, try to access uh, ESXi through the web browser, and if you a uh, long time the window is open, it's happened like this. It's, see, spinning is not taking me to in, inside. I already forgot the username and password. So what you should do, just close it and run it again. Dot one, three, dot one, dot, blah, blah, right? See, now it's gonna be logging automatically. I don't need to do anything. Because I already provide the username and password. I just reopen the tab. All right. So this is a machine I should be able to log in. You know me, right? Easy. It's open. Ah, it's almost open. Personalized my settings, but I'm not sure why from there is creating a problem. All right, so I'm able to log in here and I'm trying to log in through, okay. Two, connect, more option, go here. Say ELS, ELS slash ADMIMIS, DRAGOR, administrator. All right. So when you do the RDP, you do the same user. So I, I did successfully RDP on this machine with that domain administrator, right? Domain administrator. Okay. So if you go to the local servers, now you can see it here, ELS.com. That means our domain is already created. So how you know domain is created? And if you go to the tools, you see activity domain center, domain trust, 
uh, site and services, users and computers. If you're going to users and computers here, users and computers. Now you're going to see everything. So you can create more users. We're going to learn. So this is ELS domain, our main domain, right? And computers, right now I don't have any computers here, but I have a domain controller, one domain controller. Domain controller is here, right? Uh, users, I have some by default users. Administrator is the main, the one that we just logged in. This is the built-in administrator. I said domain administrator. And there is some other groups like domain users, groups, enterprise admin groups. So you can create any users. Let's say, for example, I want my username, my size, as a domain administrator, privilege access. In that case, I just need to right click on the domain and click copy. Then say Saif, um, um, ADM, that means admin, S A I F, ADM Saif. Sorry, um, this is my first name, the last name I there. And ADM, S A I F, that is my admin Saif. This is my administrative account, click next. And I'm doing never expired, but in your case, maybe it's not never expired, it depends on how many days. Uh, your company policies actually. So I'm just taking out this one, but maybe in reality you don't you don't need to take it out this one. Um, okay. Okay. Finish. So I have created my user here. See here, I have created my user, and this user, if I double click on it. And if I go to the member of, I'm gonna see all those are in, on my profile. So I have all this um, privilege access. And if you go to that administrator, you're gonna see the same thing. Right click on it, properties. Go to the member of, you're gonna see all those things. But if you create a regular user, so now I'm going to create my regular user. Uh, right click any place, any empty place, right click, and then go to the new, and then user. And if I create, okay, same thing, size, Majumdar. So I can save in the bracket or somewhere I'll say regular. Okay. Based on that, I can I know that this is my regular user. Okay. And what will be the user ID? Uh, just only my name. Let's say I am size. Uh, administrative one is ADM site. Now this one is on this site. Click next and the password. So I have two users and basically all these users is there by default here, but I don't want, I want to create my own folder, right? So what I what, what I what I should do under this, right? Under the ELS domain. So right click on it, click and you can say new and then go to the uh, organizational unit, OU. The, this is, is going to be look like folder, but it's an organization uh, OU, OU. So I'm going to create an organizational OU and it has a protection mode by default. Um, uh, and the name is um, accounts, accounts, the all user accounts, or you can say user accounts, user accounts, user underscore accounts, or something like this. And if you uncheck it, that means anytime you can delete it, this folder, all this, or you can delete it without any uh, anything, it's going to be delayed. But if you have this one protection, if you try to delete it, it's not gonna be delayed. You have to uncheck this one first and then you can delete it. So, okay. See, I have now this OU. Under this OU, maybe I can have more sub OU. More sub means I can right click on, on this one or maybe on the empty space. Now I selected this one and this empty space is belongs to this OU. And I can click here, I can say, I can create another OU. Okay, so I can say, uh, system admins. System admins. So system admins, all the system admins, username and password are gonna move here, okay? So now I have a users here. And um, so Saif, system admins accounts, that means maybe all the system admins, administrative accounts, okay. And then I can create another OU, computer 
Ah, sorry, OU. You can say regular user. Regular users, okay? Okay, so this SIF is administrator and this is regular, right? So the regular, I can move it like this. Just select it, drag it, and drop it here, okay? And SIF, this is the admin, admin user. Or you, I don't, or you can maybe add it here, name. Uh, I'll go here, properties. Say more than this one, name. Admin user. Okay. And move it to system admin. So you shouldn't be actually creating a user here. Later on, whenever you need, you're gonna create here. See? So what is the difference between regular user and um, if you go to the regular user, you're gonna go member options, you can see this is just domain user, not domain admin, no other privilege access. But if you go here, double click on it, you're gonna see member of lot of access. That's the difference. It's regular admin and um, administrative account and regular account. All right. So we have created, we learned already actually uh, how you can create the users and provide the uh, privilege access and also all you, all you creations. So we, 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 we learn and we are able to create users under the Active Directory. So that means we have, um, it's proved that we already built Active Directory, right? So tools again, uh, go to the Active Directory on computers and I'm going to minimize this one, sorry. Um, this one, I need this uh, this um, window uh, several times later on. So that's why I'm going to pin up here, right click on it and then say pin on uh, pin to taskbar. So if you close it and if you close the server manager, still you have this one. You just need to click here later on. It's gonna be open. See, you don't need to go again, server manager and tools and see uh, like activity users and computers, you're gonna get it here. All right, so this is our Active Directory domain controller and IP address number two. And also one thing, make sure, make sure, uh, I want to make sure on one more thing, local server and the IP address. Is there anything change? Because this is the domain right now. And go here, double click on it. IP before. Still the same thing, everything is okay. Okay, right? So later on we can change it. Close and another more important things. This is 2019. That's why after you um if previously this machine wasn't a domain controller. Now it's a domain controller. So um we was able to turn off all three firewalls, domain, public, and private. But if it is a 2016 or 2012 or two, it only it's gonna show only two. Domain is not going to show you before it's not going to be part of a domain or a domain. And after you add Active Directory or maybe you add a server with Active Directory, then you have to turn off domain profile um, later on. First thing you will get only private and public. And then later on, whenever you are going to add it as a domain controller or you want to add it as a domain, member of a domain, then you, after that, you have to turn off again the firewall for domain. But this one, I did it before I make it a domain controller, right? Because this is a 2019. 2019 has that feature. Before you make it as a domain controller or a member of a domain controller, you will be able to turn off. That's what I did. So everything is okay. Looks good here. Um, now I'm going to jump to uh, here. So this machine I want to, uh, it's already logged here, right? Here. So I installed the DNS here, close it. And if you click here, it says the add role features, installation success, okay, installation success. If you go to the tools, you're gonna to see here DNS. So if you open the DNS, and I'm going to minimize the server manager because I want to see, see this one clearly. Now this machine has a DNS role, but it's not a DNS yet. We have to create the DNS. For creating a DNS, what do you have to do? What do you have to do? So if you uh, expand this one, you're gonna see a forward lookup zone. And you're gonna see the reverse lookup zone. So we have to create forward lookup zone, right click on it, new zone, click next, 
primary zone, it's going to be primary zone and zone name ELS.com. ELS.com. So our domain is ELS.com, right? Click next. And then create a new file with this file name. So this is the first time, right? You're not using existing. If I add another, so say this is our first DNS. Whenever I'm gonna build my second DNS, in that time we're gonna use existing. Right now I'm not going to existing because this is the first time. Click next. And then do not allow dynamic updates. Okay, or allow dynamic updates. This is, this is not secure, but you can do that. Finish. Okay. So now, if you exp like expand it like this. Okay, here is DNA01, the host and host master. Now, what you can do, new host air record. So now our domain, So what is the machine name? Do you guys remember our activity machine? So our activity machine is this one, right? ELS BBW, no, sorry, not this one. This one. This one, right? So we need, we need a DNS entry for it. So I'm going to create a DNS entry now. So we have our DNS server, which I just configured. Okay, before I do that, I have to create a reverse lookup zone. Reverse lookup zone, zone name, click next, primary zone, IPv4. And what is the IPv4 address? 192.168.1, right? Click next. And it is giving you a profile name. You say next and next. So for the second machine, whenever we're going to add a second DNS server, we're going to use existing and we're going to select this one and allow, next, and finish. So now I have both, right? Yeah. So now I'm going back to the forward lookup zone and select my uh, domain and right click on it. Create the host air record for my Active Directory first domain controller. So what is the name of the Active Directory first domain controller? This one, right? So this is dot .com. Now what is the IP address? 192.168.1.2, right? And create and add host. Host is added successfully, okay, done. Now, you can say refresh, come here and refresh. See, it has a PTR record for my first domain controller. And also, if you double click on it, you're gonna see this and Name, uh, name server, that means your DNS server. So DNS server, ELS DNS, okay. You can say edit, edit it, right? Dot ELS dot com. This cannot reserve it, right? Okay. So now we need to have this machine the DNS server machine as a host record. So new, what's the name of the DNS server actually? Okay, I'm going to copy the, I can type it, but I'm lazy to do that. So I can just copy and paste there on the DNS. Okay, what's the IP address? 192.168.1.2, right? Sorry, not two, it's four. This is the DNS server, the first DNS, right? And as a host, okay, done. Now, if you go refresh and refresh this, you can have both and come back here. 
Um, and if you look at this, name ser name server, edit. Now we can say ELS dot com. Okay, this is all right. Okay. Now we are with DNS zero one is apply. Okay. All right. So now um the IP address. What is the IP address of the server? I just I the reason I'm checking this one because I have a plan to check the DNS. So now it has four, one, and two, right? It's fine, but anyway, uh, I'm actually I don't need two here anymore. I can just remove the two from here, and whenever I have my uh, second DNS, I'm gonna change this one too. I'll put instead of one, I will put five, and also on the on the advance, I don't need this DNS. I'm removing this, okay. So later on, we will, we will we're gonna change this one. Remember, we have our second DNS server, okay? Okay. All right. So DNS is done, uh, but we have to make sure, uh, I'm going to go the Active Directory server here. So DNS server and Active Directory server, two complete different server, right? Uh, me. This one. So in this one, uh, I need to change server, sorry, so local server, IP address, double click on it. See here, it has one and two, two is a DNS server, but because that time we didn't have the DNS server, now we have a DNS server. So what we can do, we can change it. Uh, instead of having four, two, we're gonna have four. And okay, and okay. Close. So still everything looks good and I need to check, run the command with the PowerShell or CMD command. Just check the NS lookup. CMD, which is command, command prompt. And then right click on it, say run as administrator, and run from here. So you can ping ping the domain. The, now I'm sitting on Active Directory Machine, which is IP address two. And I'm going to ping the DNS server, first DNS server, which is IP address is four, right? 192.168.1.4 is pinging. Okay. And NS lookup, NS lookup, then 192.168 dot one dot four. So it's giving me the domain name, DNS plus domain name, which is completely FQDN of the DNS server, right? Now from the DNS machine, from the DNS machine, this is the DNS machine, right? From here, I'm going to check ping active directory machine and check the NS lookup, which is DNS entry. Look up. Okay, sorry. Um, PMD, and then right click on it. Run. Ping one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot three. Oh, sorry. Uh, two right. It's pinging. Close, and then now. A uh, once what? Actually, NS lookup. I run NS lookup. NS lookup. Space okay, space is already there. Hit enter. See, it's showing my domain controller fully qualified domain names and everything. So now I have the join. I have the join. So after I build the ESXi, what I did, I built a virtual machine. Well, first virtual machine is for my first domain controller, and then second virtual machine I built for first DNS server. Now, the, what should be the third? The third, I should do the second domain controller. This optional. Second domain controller, you can do it later on. The very important is now you should have another DNS server. Just to make, actually it's not important, but to have a 
complete enterprise level in burn. That's what I'm saying. So I'm gonna show you another um, server here within short time. So what do you have to do? You have to build, first you build a virtual machine, then install the OS, and then what? Same thing, same way, right? All right, so we have to build another machine. So we have everything, DNS, all right. So we're gonna build another machine. How are we gonna build another machine? Let's check, let's, let's, let's have another machine. So this is the, our planning. So this is, your one is done. DNS, uh, this one is done. Now we're supposed to go for the, based on our this, we should go for this one too, but I'm not going to make it to two. I can make it later on. Uh, I'll go for this one. Uh, oh, sorry. This is zero one. This should be zero, zero, zero two. So I'm going to make it zero two right now. You know, zero two right now. Okay. And then later on, we're going to do another, another episode. We're going to make a B center. Okay. So this will be the last one for today. This is for the second episode. Okay. Home lab, build a home lab, second episode, okay? So I'm going to open my um, SXA host. So DNS 01, I build it, I build on my local host 01. In here, I have a jump machine. In here, I, I'm not sure what I have. This is my third one, root. Um, So I don't have any machine here, right? I don't have any machine here. So I can install a virtual machine here. And also maybe I can build anywhere. So anyway, uh, where is my first DNS? Okay, well, I have a DNS server here, right? First one. So I'm gonna build the second machine exactly. I'm just copying this, the, this whole name. VLS, or I can copy it from my here, right? The same name, I, well, anyway, where oh yeah, from any hurry if I can get in one. So I'm going to create a virtual machine first, create a virtual machine. I showed you several times the same system, nothing uh, change. Guest OS selection, Windows, then the version, which is 2016, uh, 2016 or later, and click next. Oh, sorry, you have to change the name to two, right? DNS number two, click next. And then I'm going to build on the uh, share stories right now. Um, after that, I will convert it whenever I have a uh, share storage. I'll measure the storage, okay? So now temporarily I'm building on the NAS storage, click next. Now the CPU, uh, I'm going to provide eight CPU, and four into two because in the physical machine I have two socket, enable it. Uh, memory, I'm, I'm going to provide gigabyte and maybe four, it's fine. And make sure enable um, hard disk, I'm going to provide like 80 gig of hard drive, but make sure it's a thin provision selected and everything looks good. And here ISO file, and show the ISO file where is my uh, Windows Server 2019 uh, from, you have to show that location. So this is the CD core, right? Windows Server 2019, select and click next and finish. All right. So now I just created the virtual machine, but it's not, the OS is not installed yet. How are you gonna install it? Just Click on it, power on, it's pretty simple. I showed you the previous um, episode. And um, so it's booting from, okay. So whenever you have, okay. In that case, what do you have to do? You have to power off again. Power off, yes. And then right click on it, go to the edit of edit settings. One thing I forget to show you guys, which is 
um, VM options. I just configured the hardware options, but VM options, um, VM tools, you're supposed to do check this and check this and boot option. Boot option is by default selected UFI, that's why. So you need to select it by BIOS and save. Okay, now power on this machine and you're gonna see the difference, see, nice loading, nice loading. So that's how you can install. Um, I'm going to pause this installation process because we did it on our last episode as the same thing. I don't want to waste time. All right, so um, one more thing you have to do, make sure because you have to make a connection. The first time I made one mistake, which you shouldn't be do that, which is uh, you can add the server you want to make a DNS server. So your first task is to install the DNS feature, DNS role, install the DNS role, and then add this machine with the domain as a, but how are you gonna add it? The first thing you cannot add it, right? Because this is your first machine. This is your first machine. You cannot add it like this. So how are you gonna do that? So, your first task is to install the DNS role, then open the DNS, and then what you did, what you did, um, you created you, you create a forward lookup zone, right? And as a forward lookup zone, you provide the name as our domain name, ELS.com, and then you created a reverse lookup zone with the IP subnet, then you get, uh, you got like only this one and this one. So what else you need as a name server, you should you need first, then you go in, you double click on the name server, you make it qualified, you provide the DNS name with the ELS.com and add it. And then later on, you have to add our domain controller because you have to make a connection, our domain controller. So how are you gonna do that? Add and then provide the fully qualified domain of your domain controller, right? That's how you can do it. And when you say resolve, it might not gonna be resolved the IP, but in any way you can add it. So like it, it, it might be show like this. If I go to edit options here, you're gonna see here, see? If I do the user result, it's not gonna be resolved. It's, it, it's trying to validate. Maybe it's gonna give you red, red warning or something. So in US, see, it's a, it's a timeout. It's fine, no problem. It's just okay. As long as it's here, it's fine. Okay, so you have this, you have this, you have this. Like as a name server, you have both like DNS server and also the Active Directory domain as a name server. And in here, make sure the zone transfer is always to any server, not dedicated to one. And say okay, so that's how everything is uh, like all any DNS server will work. So now, um, and also create a post air record for. Uh, active directory, post a record for DNS. So that's how everything is here. Now it's connected, right? So it's connected with each other. And then what else you do? Then go back here and then change computer name. And here before it was a working group, now you can change it to yls.com. So you, you can put yls.com, but sometimes whenever you put yls.com, it says error is not finding, just remove the yls. Just do it until, until the others. It's fine. And so I did different way. What I did before I add as a domain group, I did just here change and then I added, I click on more. And then because this is our first DNS machine, first DNS machine is a little compl complicated. Second one will not be that much complicated. So what I did, I added um, prefix. So first thing I installed DNS role and then open the DNS and then configure for a lookup zone and reverse lookup zone and then added um, as a name server, added the DNS server, which is DNS01 and then added our active directory as a name server, right? Uh, so if I can show you here, I, that, that will be better. I, I was talking about like this. I'm talking about this. 
this one, name server. So I added, here you see, added both as a name server. And also the zone, I make sure zone transfer, zone transfer is to any server. I just make sure zone transfer is to any server. I make sure for this one, zone transfer is to any server. And so whenever everything is done, done, then what I did, uh, oh, also after this, you have to create, you have to create a, you have to create a what? The host error record for this DNS server plus active directory domain control number one, you have to create a um, host error record. So when you have reverse lookup zone and personal configure configured and you added an IP address, create a host error record. And when you are creating in that time, it has option to like update the PTR. So apply and okay. So all the time you're going to be update the PTR. See here, update the PTRs. So that's how you will have record on, on here too, on the reverse lookup job. That's why, I, that's how I got this. And make sure if in here, name server, okay. One more mistake here. Name server, add it here. Your um, active directory, which, which one is your active directory? Make sure everything is working. Okay. So this one, this one, so you have to type it because I'm, 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 I'm um, your active directory server name is ELSBPWBA ADDC 01. Okay. ELSBPW ELSBPWBA ADDC 01. Right. Dot ELS dot com. Result. It's not going to be result, but anyway, just select it and add it. That's it. All right. Okay. Apply. Okay. That's it. Um. So after you're done with this, and then just go to the server name and change. So I added here more options. And then I added here ELS document as a suffix and it's reported. And after that, when it's come back, what I did, I added still in that time, still domain was a working group. So I click again here and change here. And I from working group to I change it to domain and I put it ELS.com. But when I did ELS.com and click OK, it's, it gave me an error. So I just removed this part, this one, and then I, I got it. So that's how you can do it, right? You, you, should, you need to do it. Okay. So we got our first domain controller and now we need to verify actually our domain controller and DNS. DNS is completely separate. So now I want to add. So I added this one as a member of a domain, right? The DNS server, I added as a member of a domain. All the way, like whenever I'm done with everything, after that I, I add this machine. Right. Usually we do first time, like the beginning we do, we make a member of a domain. But right now for this machine, especially for the first DNS server, you cannot do make a member because you don't have any DNS server. First you have to create your DNS, your lookup zone, for lookup zone, reverse lookup zone, everything whenever done, then you can do that, right? So that's what we did here. Okay, so now I it's time to test it, right? So if I go, um, Jump machine. This is our jump machine, right? So I want to add this jump machine with the domain. Okay. So before I go there, there. Okay. Before I go there, I want to make sure. Okay. Well, this this is number five. It's our second DNS server. It's not ready yet. We're gonna build this one, but I uh, just want to show you one thing, make sure in here. So right now, whenever you add any machine, it's gonna show you under computer. When you add any machine with the domain as a member, it's gonna show, it's gonna come automatically computer, um, under the computer where you see here, the DNS is here. Now we are going to add uh, our job machine. So down machine computer object is gonna be created under this. We're gonna check here. And then the IP address, the DNS entry will be on the DNS server. So those 
we're going to verify. So now we don't have any more uh, computer, right? So whenever we're going to initiate to add um, job machine with this active directory, you want to see here a computer object automatically. Okay, so that's what we're going to verify. And um, the DNS. So now how many DNS uh, like post record we have? We have only one, right? At two. So whenever we're going to add job machine, it's going to show three. Let's, let's do it. So how are we going to do that? Okay. On the local server, this is our job machine. And click on the job machine computer name. I already got assign IP address and everything is done. Everything is done. So I just need to add here, change. And on the domain, select the domain and then ELS, .com, and then click OK. Now you have to verify with that admin, domain admin users. It can be your personal administrative account or maybe domain administrative account, anyone. So, but for your personal, if in some case you have an administrative account, but your administrative account doesn't have this privilege access to add a machine. So make sure you have that privilege access too, if you use your personal, okay. So I'm using the domain administrator, which is uh, ELS. Okay, which is administrator at ELS.com, which is the ELS administrator, domain administrator, and password. So now it's going to add this machine, say, welcome to ELS.com. So it's added, and we need to be restarted. Yes, sir. So now this jump machine is added with the domain. Now it's restarting. And now we, are, we need to verify actually this machine is added or not. So till now, it still like it shows our, uh, it's supposed to be create a computer object inside our active directory. Um, oh, you right com under the computer, oh, you right. So just refresh it. See, it's all automatically created. I just refresh, allow you, and it's created. Right now, it's time to verify on the DNS side, the DNS server. Let's check on the DNS server. Uh, where is the DNS server? It's here, right? So it's still now it shows nothing here, only two record, host record. It's supposed to be three host record. It should be at the job machine here, right? So you just need to refresh it. Uh, with shut time, we're gonna see. All right, see, look at here. It wasn't there before. Now I, we got it here and go reverse lookup zone. And here, so that means it's working perfectly. Now it's time to um, work with our second DNS server. So I have already built the virtual machine with all kind of requirement, which is, uh, change time zone, IP address, uh, firewall, turn off, computer name, everything is done. Now we're gonna install the roles. So add it, role. add feature of roles, click next, next, next. And which one? Just only DNS, right? DNS and add feature, click next, next, next. And make sure you check mark on it and install. Okay, so now the roles is installing on our second domain controller machine, but this machine is not a domain controller yet. We're gonna make it a domain controller, second domain controller. And just wait for me here. Um, I'm going to pause the video. After it's done, I will come back again. All right, so um, on our second domain controller machine, DNS uh, roles is already installed successfully. See here, install success, and we can close it. And I want to check actually what's going on with this. So IP number five, one, four, five. I don't have internet, right? The reason I don't have internet because I'll have it shortly. 
go here, DNS, add 168.1.1 because internet is on that server. Okay. Hopefully. Anyway, I don't like. Okay. So now, that's fine. So this machine is ready and all the, we have already DNS roles installed and what else you need. So you can start with DNS configuration like DNS. You can have, um, so right now it's, it doesn't have anything, right? So you can add the machine with the domain right now, right now, because you have already another DNS server that you can do that. Or you can start the way we did we build our first one. You can do the same way. It's not an issue. Um, so remember, very important. The first domain controllers, the, sorry, the first DNS server, we wasn't able to add as a member because we don't have any DNS. How are we going to create a DNS entry? Because when you add the adding process of a new server with a domain, it creates a DNS entry inside the DNS server, right? But the first DNS server, we wasn't able to do the, these options because that time we, we don't have any, we didn't have any uh, DNS server, right? That's why we did, uh, we configure first uh, the DNS, uh, what is called, this DNS. This one, I'm going to minimize it actually. Clean up and minimize it. So now I can add it, add, change, okay. Because this is our second one. ELS.com, okay. And then A-D-M-I-N-I-S-E-R-A-G-E-R, add, ELS.com, right? And, Close, paste that. All right. So now, DNS, our first DNS. Second DNS, I just added a machine with that. Second DNS server, what I did, I just installed the DNS role and then add the DNS server machine with the domain because now we have options to add it. Uh, but it's not showing here, right? Just refresh it. In short time, it's going to be show here. Still is three. Short time because the machine is rebooting. And also we can check and verify on the Active Directory machine. So if you refresh, oh, refresh here, see now it's showing yes, yeah, number two machine is as a computer object on inside the Active Directory. Now it's time to verify with what? With our DNS, but why DNS still not showing? Because my machine is rebooting. It's taking time. So now it's added. See here, we have number five. Number five is here, right? And, and let's look up. If you go here and refresh it, you're going to see number five is here. So it's done. All right. So, so far we learn um, after Active Directory, how we can create our first DNS server, right? So DNS server is separate server and Active Directory stuff is just Active Directory. It's not a DNS server together, right? So we already created Active Directory environment, with, which is our ADDC01. And then this is our uh, DNS server, DNS01, which you already created our forward lookup zone, we created our reverse lookup zone, right? So now, if you want more DNS server, if you want more DNS server, maybe you can have 
multiple DNS server. Why you should have multiple DNS server? Just distributed the workload. That means what? Load balancing. So for load balancing, if you need more uh, DNS server, what do you need to do? You just need to have a virtual machine. On top of the virtual machine, you need to install Microsoft operating system. It can be any operating system, 2016, 2019, 2022, anything, whatever, right? And how you can add them. So the first one we already learned actually how we, did, we do that, right? So it's the second domain control uh, DNS server or third DNS server, the process is same thing. If you look at on my screen, so I install a virtual machine and on top of the version I install a uh, Windows 2019 operating system. And then I did some, but this is the common thing for any virtual machine, Windows virtual machine. You have to turn off the file temporarily, uh, change the uh, uh, time zone and, um, and also, um, what is called uh, uh, IP addressing. And then if whenever you have all, on, the first thing is you have to install VMware tools. Don't forget it. And then you have to add this machine with the domain. How you can add a machine with the domain? It's simple, just the member server. So what do you have to do? We have to provide a computer name, everything, whenever you're done, then add the machine with the domain. I already added, so change computer name. And before it was in work group, you just need to select this one domain before it was in work group. You need this one and then your domain name and your machine name is already there because you already put it there. And then okay, and then provide uh, add your provide your uh, administrative credential, active administrative credential. Then you can add it with the domain. So make sure I already added. That's why you see here as a domain ELS.com. And if you look at in here on the active directory side, you're gonna see this machine as a member server. So I have created here uh, uh, a OU name. It's, it's for a, a DNS computer object. So DNS server. I, I created it manually. It's a um, OU. So I added this machine here. See here, the second one is here. So that's how you're gonna add it. Create a computer object, then add this process. You, after that, now the main important thing is how you can add it as a DNS server, how you can approach this one as your DNS. But this DNS will be your um, read only DNS because you have already primary one, right? Master one. You have all the DNS zero one is your master. So whenever you need to read and write everything you can do on DNS one, and it's gonna be copied to your other DNS server, DNS two, DNS three, DNS four, DNS five, whatever you have. But all those are will be your uh, read only uh, DNS server. So and make sure you have the right DNS server. So see here, the number five is our secondary DNS server IP address. And as a DNS server, preferred DNS server, I put four because my master one IP address is four and then five. And then if you have more, you can add more, it's, it's up to you. But I added uh, uh, our default gateway here because for the internet, see here, I have internet connection here. If you want, you can add it without internet, it still is it's gonna work fine. It's up to you. All right, so those are the configurations. Now it's time to add. So if you go to the server manager, it's actually, I don't want to show like this way, uh, tools, uh, DNS, then you can get DNS. So I already added, click this one, that's how I get this and I get this one and then I just pin to the taskbar. See, I pin it. So now you see here, your secondary DNS server, the zone is nothing, reserve lookup zone is nothing. What are you gonna do? Create a new zone, click next. Primary zone, instead of primary zone, you're gonna do a secondary zone. Click next and zone name ELS.com, right? Next. And now you see what it says, master server. What is your DNS, master DNS server, which is our DNS zero one, right? So you're gonna provide the IP address or the name FQDN of your first DNS server, your master DNS server. So we know what is this dot one dot four right and then when you click here you're gonna get it right and click next okay you get this one right click next and finish okay. see here okay okay 
I'm going to delete it. Why I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure why it's not showing. Again, try again one more time. New zone. Click next. Secondary zone. Click next. DNS uh, namespace, which is uh, the server is authority. We might okay. So ELS dot from exactly this one. Click next. 192.168.1.4, which is my master. The master server is this one. Click next and finish. And refresh. Okay, now it's showing. So sometimes it's happened. Don't worry about it. So now, whatever the record I have here, everything I have in this here. But in here, you cannot create a host record. But in here, in here, it's a DNS zero, which is your mushroom. You can create a host record. So whenever you need a host record, you're gonna create on the primary one. And it's gonna be copied to your secondary. If you have multiple secondary, it's gonna be copied to all secondary. And reverse lookup zone, sometimes reverse lookup zone is creating some issues. I checked previously, but anyway, we can create like the same way just the IP uh, subnet. Then your master server, I, uh, which is 192.168.1.4, right? And you found it, right? Click next and finish. So you have, it's sometimes it shows, but it's going to be come up later on. I'm not worried about this. So I have everything here, right? So if you go back your primary DNS and create just a test one, so you can say test zero one. Is you are just creating a host record, right? One ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot say seventy, and create a pointer record. Add, okay, done. So you have just created this one, right? Now if you refresh here and go here, you can see seventy PD record here, and also you have it. You have a record here, right? Post a record. So now I just need to go back my DNS number two, and I want to see actually is see it's showing on your DNS number two. So it's going to show if you have multiple, it's going to show same way, exactly same way. So that means in some for some reason, if your this primary server is down, then this one will be act as a primary, right? And also not only that, um, say. Um, some of the application you use DNS server as a DNS server, you use only as a DNS, uh, a DNS two, secondary DNS, or maybe your DNS number three, or maybe DNS number four. So those server will authenticated through the DNS, the DNS name will be resolved through your secondary one, secondary, like your DNS two or DNS three or DNS four, because it has the DNS record, right? So that's, that's called it load balancing that means just for example you you, you have an uh, application that application is asking you to use um, dns name primary dns primary dns server so you can use this dns server as a primary your secondary one use or for this application server you can use as a primary so those application when it needs to resolve uh needs to resolve the dns name so it's going to come to your secondary dns or maybe your third dns right server it's not gonna go your primary master DNS. That means the traffic is not go your primary DNS. It goes to your secondary or third or fourth or fifth DNS server. That's what it's called a load balancing. And that's all for today. And if you guys like this video, this is the series of video. So I already released my first uh, my first video. Uh, I'm going to show you. So I'm going to create uh, some series of videos. Okay, open and then um, if you go to my channel, you're gonna get it. Is it international? And if you're new in my channel, please subscribe my channel, then you'll get all the updates, whatever I release. So this is the BMR Home Lab part one. And the one I recorded today, this is gonna be BMR Home Lab part two, but the first one was IDRA configuration, RAID configuration, and ESX installation configuration. So the part two is active directory installation and configuration, 
DNS server installation configuration plus how to add a secondary DNS server or third DNS server or fourth DNS server. So that's the second part. And it's going to be a series. I'm going to release one by one. Um, so stay tuned till then. Um, and if you're new, please subscribe my channel and give a big thumbs up if, if it's a helpful uh, for you. And also, don't forget to click bell icon because if you don't click the bell icon, you'll not get the notification for my uh, next video. That's all for today. Thank you. Thanks for watching.